There we go. Thank you, Pastor G. All yours. Um, good evening, everybody. The Lord bless you, everyone um, connecting on um, Zoom this evening. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I give God all the praises, all the glory for this opportunity to share his word tonight. Amen. I just pray that um, his word will touch our hearts and help us this evening in Jesus' name. And I also want to just thank God for our bishop and I'm grateful for giving the opportunity to be able to share on um, Zoom this evening the word of God to be able to teach. Um, I don't take it for granted, you know that um, I've been given the opportunity to teach God's word and I pray that God gives me the grace to be able to teach it accurately, rightly dividing his word of truth in the name of Jesus. And um, yes, we've been doing the um, gift of the Spirit, amen, and we've been dealing with the revelation gift. Um, we've been dealing with um, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom and discerning of spirit. And we looked at designing of spirit last week. Amen. Hallelujah. We were looking at designing of spirit. And um, I don't know, before we go forward, I don't know if someone can remind us what we said, the designing of spirit was the definition for it. Hallelujah. Anybody? Yes, I'll make a start. Yeah. Discerning of spirit is a third of the category of revelational gifts yes they used to recognize and distinguish between yeah. the serving of spirits gives insight into the spiritual world amen yeah. amen yeah. praise the lord jesus christ anybody has anything else anybody else okay praise the lord jesus christ so yes Sorry, you want to say something? Yeah, we we looked at the example of Moses, uh, of Moses. Yes. In Exodus thirty-three. Yes. Where uh, he was able to see in the through the Spirit as God showed him His glory. Yeah, amen. 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 And then we went to Isaiah six, verse yes. one and two, being able to see the Spirit into the Spirit world. <clears throat> That's what we covered there. And then we went to Ezekiel uh, 37 and Revelation chapter, um, chapter 1. So, so we're seeing in the realm of the spirit here. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Thank you very much, um, Pastor-elect. Thank you very much in Jesus' name. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we just want to, you know, we said something last week that um, discerning of spirit is not just only seen into the evil world. You know, a lot of people think it's only seeing evil, evil spirits all the time. That, that's what it's all about. Well, we talked about it last week that it wasn't just about only seeing into the evil world. But I want to also talk about there are three classes of spirits that um, we encounter in the Christian life. Amen. There are various classes of spirits that we can encounter or we encounter in the Christian life. Amen. And um, the first one is the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of God. Amen. We know if we encounter the Holy Spirit, yes, we're encountering the Spirit world through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And also the second one is the good angels. Hallelujah, Isaiah, we really saw Isaiah, he encountered the spirit, I mean, the angels of the Lord, the seraphim and cherubim and seraphim, they will be by the throne of God. He saw them, hallelujah, one of them brought the coals from the temple and put it in his lips. Because he said he was a man of unclean lips. We remember that story in um, Isaiah chapter 6. Amen. That vision in Isaiah chapter 6. And um, the second one also, um, there is also a spirit. The, the fallen angels, rebellious angels, demons, or evil spirits. Um, God can open our eyes to see into that realm. Why? If we see, and um, the Lord might show us that they are oppressing 
a particular person so that we can use our authority to free them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, we have the human spirit. Every human being has his own spirit. We either know whether they are operating under the right spirit or whether they are operating under the wrong spirit. Amen. So those are the areas, that, those are the spirits we can encounter. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ in our walk as Christians. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we, we spoke about Moses encountering the Lord, the Lord revealing to him, revealing himself to him, but he didn't show the fullness of himself. He just he was able to design the similitude of God, just a little bit, a glimpse of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And that you couldn't see physically. God has to open your eyes in the spirit to be able to see that. Hallelujah. And this is one of the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit can help us to, to operate under. Hallelujah. According to his will. Um, I was reading um, um, Derek Prince's book, and he says one day he was preaching, and a lady with a dark glasses, she had the dark glasses on, and she literally, after the service, walked up to him, and she took her glasses off and said, can you look straight into my eyes and see whether there's an evil spirit in there? And he just laughed and he says, you know, that spirit does not operate like that. I don't have the power to switch it on and off whenever I want to. It is only according to the, it's according to the will of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That you can operate in such gift. It does, just doesn't happen like that. Amen. The only gift that we can turn on and off if we want to is the gift of praying in tongues. Amen. And it is that one that activates the old gifts. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the only one I know we can activate the praying in tongue bait. We can up, switch it on and off because it's a prayer language. And God says that we should pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. And if he commands us to pray without ceasing and he has given us a spiritual language to pray with, we can use it anytime. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we also see here that um, there is um, discerning the reason Christ. And we see that through the discerning of the spirit or seeing into the spirit realm, one may even discern the reason Christ. No one has actually seen him physically since his ascension and sitting on the high, sitting on high. He is seated on the right hand of the Father where he ever liveth in he ever liveth to make intercession for us. We see this in Hebrews 7 26, that he making intercession for us. But through this supernatural gift of the Son of Spirit, people have sometimes been able to see into the spirit realm and see Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us remember Stephen when he was being stoned to death? Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles very quickly. Acts chapter 9. It must be 8, sorry. Acts chapter 8. Pretty sure it's eight. Mm. Mm, Lord Jesus, help me here. Acts chapter seven, sorry. This was where Stephen was proclaiming the gospel. And those that stood by listening to him, they couldn't take it anymore. Because it was too much for them, the gospel he was preaching. Hallelujah. Then we read from verses 14. Verses 14. 
It says when they had heard these things, they were cut out, they were, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. This was when he was preaching. They could not stand him because he was telling them the truth. They just couldn't take it. And they say, he said, the Bible says, when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. Everybody, can you see that? What scripture is that, please? Acts chapter 7, verses 14, verses 54, sorry. Oh, 54, yeah, thank you. Sorry, 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 it's my mistake. I said 14. I'll start again. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. And, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. Amen. Can you see that? He saw the glory of God. The people that were around him that were stoning him wouldn't have seen that. Amen. They wouldn't have seen what he saw. He would have been the only one that was seeing that. Hallelujah. It says he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Amen. Amen. So his spiritual eyes was open and he was able to see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Amen. And said, look, I see heavens opened and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. You see, they couldn't see what he was saying. They thought he was blaspheming because, you know, what happens when the, the Jews, when they think you're blaspheming, they take their, they get really, they get agitated. They tear their clothes off, you know, they rent their clothes into two because they couldn't stand it. And, and this was probably what happened during the time of, um, during the time of, um, Stephen, when he, when he was preaching the gospel and he saw visions and he was telling them what he saw and then they had to literally get, they grabbed hold of him, took him out of the temple and then they took him and stoned him to death. Praise the Lord. But before that, prior before that, he could see into the spirit. The Bible says he was full of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he was able to see the Lord on his throne was able to see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what that means when they say standing at the right hand of God. It wasn't literally saying that. It was not a geographical location he was talking about. Because if you understand the Jewish language of somebody standing at the right hand of God, they means, it means he was literally standing as God in the place of power and authority. That was why they took him and stoned him to death because they said, how can you say Jesus is God? That's exactly what it means. And they stoned him to death for that. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, also, we also see another case in the Bible that talks about the signing of spirit as well. In the case of um, our brother John in the book of Revelation, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, Revelation. Um, John in his vision on the Isle of Patmos saw the Holy Spirit as seven spirits before the throne of God. We remember that in Revelation where he saw the seven spirits of God, hallelujah. Um, so he saw the Holy Spirit as seven spirits before the throne of God. That simply meant that John was seen into the spirit realm and seen seven aspects of the spirit of God. Because some people might come and ask you, how can you say there are seven spirits? <laughs> you know, they can ask you that question that, but God is one and he only has one spirit. How can you say he's seven spirits? But hey, he only saw the seven aspect, which is the way he manifested himself in different in different ways, seven times, seven aspects of the spirit. He saw that the Lord was able to open his eyes to see that. Hallelujah. So 
All such vision will be a manifestation of the gift of discerning of spirit. A vision might bring with it also. And okay, yeah, this is where I think Sister Helen was asking. Um, she was asking how the word of wisdom and um, prophecy. She was asking how can they, you know, what's the difference between them? And obviously, I, I, we're still going to have to talk about prophecy because there are many areas to prophecy that we can talk about. But in this area, we can see that also that in discerning of spirit, in the area of discerning of spirit, um, a vision might bring with it a word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Amen. When you see into the spirit, it might bring with it word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Hallelujah. But the vision itself would be the gift of discerning of spirit in operation. Hallelujah. In operation, while you can see in the vision, word of knowledge and word of wisdom, and it could be revealed in symbols or in different ways the Lord is going to reveal it to you. Hallelujah. But the vision itself, just the vision that you see, it means, it means that you're able to see into the realm of the spirit. That vision itself is the gift of discerning of spirit. Do, 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 do you understand that? Do, do, do. Am I making sense here? Hello, everybody. Am I making sense here? Please can, can you, you just respond? repeat that if you don't mind, Pastor G, yeah. if you don't mind? Okay. I said a vision bring with it word of wisdom or word of knowledge. And you know, when we're able to see a vision, it means that we're able to see into the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the vision itself would be the gift of discerning of spirit. But that vision itself can bring with itself word of wisdom and word of knowledge. So the three can happen at the same time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The three revelational gifts can also work at the same time. Let's, 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 let's look at it from Revelation. We've read the book of Revelation. I'm pretty sure we did the book of Revelation sometime last year. Excuse me. And we see, first of all, when Jesus appears unto John at the Isle of Patmos. Yes, he was seeing a vision. He was seeing into the spirit. That is the discerning of spirit. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verses 1, and I'm reading from the New King James Bible. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must surely take place, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. So we know John saw something, and this was not something natural or physical. It was something spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that seeing what he saw, that was the discerning of spirit taking place. Amen. So... It says, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of these prophecies. So also you see that 
the signing of spirit is happening here and there is a word of prophecy also happening here. Amen. So you see how all these give, they can come together at the same time. They can walk together at the same time very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, basically, okay, let me just hold out. I'll, I'll explain that. So the word of prof prophecy and keep those things which were written in it for the time is near. So blessed is he who reads, this is three, and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. Verses four, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. We talked about he's seen into the spirit, into the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth to him who loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to God and Father, to him be glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him and they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses eight, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty. I, John, verses nine, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom, sorry, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom, and patience of Jesus Christ was on the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. So basically he was, it was, it was, he had to be taken on exile to the isle of Patmos. Why? For, for he was, he was facing tribulation. Amen. For the preaching of the gospel. So he says, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus. You see, that was why he was taken down there. They tried to kill him, actually. They tried to fry him in a massive pot, but nothing happened. He didn't die. That's why they call him John the Divine. If you read the story, why they had to take him, they had to just take him to the Isle of Patmos and just dump him there. Amen. He says, was on the, he was on the Isle of that is called Patmos for the word of God, for the word of God. The reason why it was there is for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and who, what you see, the signing of spirit. Amen write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which is in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pagamos, to Theatera, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, to Laodicea. Then I turned and I to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. These are all the signs you see into the spirit realm. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of the seven lampstand, one like the son of man, clothed with garments, down to the feet, guarded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wood, 
as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. Amen. His feet were like fine brass and if as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. This is the signing of spirit. This is, this is a gift of the spirit in taking place right now. John was walking in the gift of spirit and the gift of the spirit he was walking on was the revelation in our gift called the discerning of spirit. Hallelujah. Then he says, and I saw him, I, I, and I, when I saw him, I fell at, at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who was, he who lived, who was dead. And behold, I am alive furthermore, amen, forevermore, amen. And I have the key of Hades and death. Then it says, write these things which you have seen and the things which you, which the things which are and the things which will take place after this. Listen to what it says. It says, write the things which you have seen. Amen. And the things which are and the things which will take place after. Amen. So we see here something is about to be revealed to him of things that would happen after. Amen. This is another gift in place here, which we could call either the gift of prophecy and some of it might be a word of wisdom. Amen. Then if we go to chapter two, He says, and the angel of the church of Ephesus, right, um, to the angel of, Eph um, of the church of Ephesus, write this thing, say, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works. Amen. What does that tell us? Facts. Something that has happened in the past. Word of what? Knowledge. Amen. So I know your works. This is God now showing John, John the divine something that he couldn't have found out himself unless it was revealed to him. Hallelujah. So he says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and I found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience. You see, he's telling them, this is, is revealing to John what the church in Ephesus have done. So what, what I'm showing us this is that within the scope of the gift of the revelational gift of the signing of spirits, Word of knowledge can take place. Word of wisdom can take place. Prophecy can take place. Hallelujah. But the gift of seeing into the spirit on its own is the signing of spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. So is the, the signing of this. Sorry? Just repeat that again, please, about the gift. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, I said. <coughs> Sorry. We see that the gift of knowledge is in is at work. The gift, I mean, I mean, sorry, in the gift of discerning of spirit, seen into the realm of the spirit, other gifts can also be in operation, which could be word of knowledge word of wisdom or the gift of prophecy in that same gift. Amen. So the least out of all the revelational gift, the three revelational gift is the gift of discerning of spirit. Because the discerning of spirit would need, we need the other stuff that is revealing anyway. 
praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But seeing into the spirit is what the discerning of spirit is. And is the least of all the revelational gifts of the three revelational gifts. And the three revelational gifts we're talking about is the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirit. Amen. Any question? Before I move on. So we talked about last week Amen. We talked about last week about discerning of spirits. The gift of discerning of spirits in the case of, um, of a lady when Paul was ministering in the book of Acts. Amen. We looked at Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. Amen. Amen. So the gift of discerning of spirit also reveals the kind of spirit behind a supernatural manifestation. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is where we have to be very careful in the body of Christ. We have to believe, we have to make sure, you know, this is why in, 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 in our local assembly, we must make sure that we are praying that the Holy Spirit, we allow the Holy Spirit to be at work at all time. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, you know, we know Satan is a counterfeit spirit. He likes to counterfeit things to make it look like it is of God. But if we don't know, if we don't have the signing of spirits, we might not be able to identify what spirit is in operation. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So we see in Acts, um, we see in Acts, Chapter 16 and verses 16 to 18. If you're there, you can please um, can please um, read for us. I can read it. Yes, thank you. Um, it's now it happened as we went to pray that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who mm. brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and, uh, and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Mm. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Amen. Thank you very much for that. Amen. So we see here, Paul comes into the city and um, look at it says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And this same followed Paul and us cried, saying, these men are the servant of the most high. Look, you see, just because something looks like a miracle or something is a miracle, doesn't mean that it's all from God. Amen. So we have to be very careful. Just because somebody has got a gift doesn't really mean that it's always of God. That is where the discerning of spirit comes in place. We're able to know whether it is of God or not of God. Imagine if Paul was not sensitive to the Holy Spirit, this woman would have been able to, basically maybe Paul would have said, wow, how did this lady know that we're children of God? She must have a gift, the Spirit must be speaking through her. Oh, let's use her, let her come with us. We'll go do the work of the ministry together and start getting her to lay hands on people and pray for people. Guess what? <laughs> you know? 
So that's why it's important that the gift, this is why the gift of the sounding of spirit is very essential in the body of Christ to be in operation because it's not all, it's not all who say, Lord, 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 the Bible says. It says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Amen. So we're able to know, okay, praise God. Brother Matthew wants to ask a question. Um, yeah, just, just a quick one, Pastor Gabriel. Um, I was just wondering, I might be wrong here, but I was just looking, um, 1 John um, 4. Yes. Um, are those verses related to discerning of spirits or the gift of discerning of spirits? 1 John what? 1 John 4 um, from about 24. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 1 John 4, um, 1. For one, it says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. Thank you very much. Amen. Is, is this related to what we're talking about? Sorry, it was just something that kind of popped into my head. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. This is the same thing. This is um, this lady. Look at this lady with the in, in Acts. And let's 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 actually take this post done for on one hand, Acts chapter 16 and 16 on the other hand. Amen. So we see here, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Hallelujah. So he's saying we shouldn't believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. So, yes, we have to be very, very careful. We have to be able to test every spirit, whether they are of God. And when the discerning, when the gift of discerning of spirit is in place, is working, is in operation, amen, this will be actually helpful for us to be able to stop such spirit although every one of us have got the holy spirit in working in us and we can without the gift of discerning of spirit we can also know intuitively that a spirit is not of god hallelujah but in a place or in a situation where we have to, and where the discerning of spirit has to be working, it has to be in operation in order to, <coughs> in order to, um, in order to expose the wrong spirit in operation. Amen. The discerning of spirit is important for it to operate in the body of Christ. Amen. And then um, a spirit filled church, when we have a church that is filled with the spirit and allow the um, Holy Spirit. Um, room to operate it this sort of um, manifestation of the design of spirit she shouldn't be an issue in the body of Christ hallelujah praise the Lord Jesus Christ so yes um it's important like Paul here <coughs> was able to understand the spirit that was in operation here because the Bible says in verses 17 it says the same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these are the servant of the most high which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. So it was not, she didn't do it one day. She was doing it every day. But the question is why didn't Paul rebuke her in the first day, the second day, the third day, the third day? Amen. Bible says she did it so many days. But all of a sudden, the Bible says, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I am Brother Jameson to ask the question. Uh, yeah, I think on uh, Revelation chapter 2, the one we were reading before, uh, verse 2, I think it mentions it as well. It says, I know, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles yes. and are not and have found them liars. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, verses two, where is that? Let's see. Uh, Revelations two. And verses. Verses two. Verses two. 
He says, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have uh, found them liars. How did you think they would have been able to do that without that gift in operation? Amen. So we see, you can't don't you, we can't limit the way the gift works. The gifts, all these gifts, they can work by the by the way the Holy Spirit wanted into operation. Amen. Wanted to in operation. So the whole the, the Holy Spirit can decide to move, and you can have all these gifts happening at the same time. Bam, 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 bam. You won't even know. But if you take time to actually look at it and 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 actually um, look at what has happened you will find that some of these gifts, other gifts have been in between there in operation. Hallelujah. Like sometimes when somebody wants to give a, 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 a prophecy, um, prophecy is not limited to foretelling. Prophecy also can also be the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Revelation 19.10, let's open there. I don't want to talk about prophecy now, but let me just, I think we're kind of like, it's just like an introduction. Amen. It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Since the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So You know, prophecy and tongues, you know, when you have the gift of tongue, tongues and prophecy can come in tongues as well. And the interpretation, it will come out as prophecy. Amen. When you interpret those tongues, it can come out as prophecy. But let's just leave that for now. <laughs> I don't want us to go into prophecy now. Let's just stick to discerning of spirit. So, so we see here that um, it's important that we have that gift of discerning of spirit in the church, because if things are happening in the church that are not of God, first of all, we need to begin to ask ourselves, where is the source of such spirit of deception coming from? That's where the discerning of spirit comes in. We're able to, we're able to discern and know, hey, I'm going to mean This is not right. This is not of God. This is, we need to test this spirit. This, this is not coming from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, um, and then um, we thank God that this, um, you know, if we allow the Holy Spirit to be, to walk in our midst, this will, this we will experience in the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. But Matthew, do you still want to ask another question? Seems your hands are still. Yes, yes, please, Gabriel. It was just going back to the scripture that I mentioned in First uh, John um, yeah. one four um, two. That this bit here is this just more of a a word of not wisdom, but is it actually a guide um, to discerning of spirits? So it says here, by by this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. Mm -hmm. Is that more just that? Is that just like a guide to discerning a, a spirit? Yeah, it's or actually, discerning like a person. Yes, it's also if we look at this scripture now, when it says every spirit that does not confess, that's how we know mm -hmm. the spirit is in operation. Yeah. And we're able to know if a spirit doesn't confess Jesus Christ comes in the flesh. And for example, let will give you an example. Um, I'm trying to find out 
what sort of um, how I can put it in this. He says, okay, but, but this you know that the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. He says, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Basically, we know that not everybody believes that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. So when we say Jesus Christ coming in flesh, we're meaning that God became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. That's exactly what we mean by that. But any spirit that says that God did not come in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ, it says this sort of spirit is not of God. And we have so many different beliefs that doesn't believe that God came in the flesh anyway. For example, Islam. They only believe that Jesus is just, Jesus was born immaculately, but he's not God. He's just the prophet. So the Bible is giving us um, through the spirit, how, through the word of God, how we can um, discern which is of God and which is not of God is when somebody says that Jesus Christ is um, Jesus Christ coming um, in the, Jesus Christ as God in the flesh is not God. You understand that he he's just a prophet. He can never be God. So he therefore, he can be perfect to die for the sin of the world. All these are included in the fact that which every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Amen. So that's what it means to say Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. You're basically saying that God, that Jesus Christ is not God on earth. The Bible called him Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. The Bible talks about a virgin that will give back to a son and he shall be called wonderful. I mean, I mean, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace. He says, if anybody comes and say that he's not in the flesh, that means if God is not in the flesh, because we know Jesus is God made in the flesh. If anybody comes and confess otherwise, then such person, he says, that's the spirit of Antichrist. Amen? And it's not of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether that answers your question. Yeah, that's fine. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But you don't have to be Walking in the signing of spirits to be able to know that. Yeah. You can know that through the knowledge of God's word that you have in you. Amen. Through the knowledge of through the knowledge. But the signing of spirit is basically seen into the realm of the spirit, seen into the spirit realm, seeing what sort of spirit is in operation. You understand when there's an evil spirit trying to camouflage as the spirit of God and try to deceive people, then you can, through the signing of spirit, know what spirit is in operation, just like what Paul, is, um, what Paul did here. You know, so many people, they flood into the church today. They have so many things in operation in them. And if you're not somebody that is sensitive to the spirit, you can get them, because they have all the... Um, Christianese language. They have all the languages, all the Christianese language. They have, oh, they say, oh, glory, hallelujah, oh, praise God. Look, there are many in Africa. There are many in all around the world. They would, they would, they would basically just come into the church. Even you even find some people that um, because their parents has always gone to church. I'm not saying they've got the wrong, I'm not saying they have bad spirit. I'm just saying now. Some people. All throughout their, um, when they were young, their parents have just taken them to church and they've got used to just coming to church. So they know the language. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is. But they've not one day given their heart to Christ. But when you see them, you can just assume that they are Christians. But on this occasion with Paul, this was a lady that was operating in the, with the spirit of divination. This is an evil spirit. 
the spirit from the devil, from a satanic spirit. And what satanic spirit will try to do is to try to get closer through deceit. And this was what this woman was trying to do. This girl was trying to do, getting closer to the man of God, trying to bring attention to herself by saying something that is actually true about the man of God so she can bring attention to herself so she can deceive people. So Paul was able to recognize that spirit and rebuild that spirit straight away before any damage is made to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we, as watchmen, as prayer warriors, and um, people in the church, not even just, though you can't just leave it to the prayer warriors. Every member of the church, amen, should be vigilant in the church. They should be prayerful, vigilant, and also be in their word. Hallelujah. They should be there as watchmen, amen. That when anything is happening, they're able to say, oh, we're not really sure about this. Okay, I'm going to speak to the leaders in the church. And I'm going to ask them whether this is what the Lord, this is what I feel the Lord is saying. This is what I'm, I'm picking up. Please, um, are you picking the same thing up too? I might be wrong, but if you have an inch, if, you, if, if the Lord is revealed to you, you have to make it known. So that either we pray about it, so that everybody can also be in watch and see so that we can either deliver that person and win them to Christ and not allow the spirit that is trying to take, not allowing that spirit to take place in our midst. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother Ian, or Sister Helen. Yeah, it was me, Pastor Gabriel. Um, is it the, was it similar to the spirits when Jesus said to Peter that he, he told Peter that he was going to die and then raise on the third day. Then Peter said to him, you know, God forbid. And then Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Thank you. Discerning spirit, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look at, let me say, <laughs> you know how Peter was so close to Jesus. He was working with Jesus. He was participating in the miracles. Everything was around him. He was around Jesus Christ all the time. And all of a sudden, Jesus Christ was going to fulfill the will of God. And all of a sudden, he says, no. Anybody that tries to take, I'm going to do this. Ah, no, he was telling Jesus actually off. Well, well, no, you can't do that. Jesus turned to him. One minute, Jesus Christ spoke to him. Oh, Peter. He says, you, he says, that through that revelation, because you reveal, it was revealed to Peter that he is the Christ, the Messiah. The Messiah. The you see, the, the reason why Jesus Christ was saying that, wow, what's such a revelation? Because in the Old Testament, the word Christ is the same word as Messiah in the Old Testament. And Messiah, according to the Jewish people, is actually God himself, the Messiah that will come. That's why when it talks about in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, unto us a son is born, and a child is born, and a son is given, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Amen? Prince of Peace. And also it talks about in Isaiah 7, 14, about a virgin that will give back to a Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. So that the Messiah, the Messiah, they saw him to be God with us. So when Peter said, you are the Christ, he was saying you are the Messiah that has, they have been talking about in the old that will come. And Jesus Christ said, wow, it's not flesh and blood that reveals this truth to you. It's definitely God that has revealed this truth to you that you're saying, I am the Messiah. Then, few verses after, Peter begins to rebuke Jesus for going to the cross. And Jesus didn't say, Peter, he didn't say, Peter, you're a devil. No, 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 no. He rebuked the spirit behind the idea that he wasn't going to go to the cross. And that's the enemy right there. Amen. So you have to rebuke the spirit. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. When did Peter turn Satan all of a sudden between few verses from revealing, having a revelation and all of a sudden he becomes the devil. 
It is the idea. It is the will of the enemy. Peter was, was now starting to, starting to um, entertain the will of the wicked one that Jesus Christ shouldn't go to the cross. Imagine if he hadn't gone to the cross, what would happen to us this day? Amen. So Jesus Christ also operated in that gift of designing of spirit. He was able to know what sort of spirit was in operation at that moment. And he had to rebuke that spirit right there and there. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Any question? Bishop, I'm just, um, just can I have just about two minutes? I'm just going to hand over to you. Yeah. Yeah, we do understand that in the time that we are living in, scripturally, before Jesus shall come, there will be a lot of things happening. Things are happening in the spirit realm where you and I will be tested by what spirit is inside of you. And because the enemy know his time is running out, and he will even confuse you. And if your faith is not strong enough and you believe in God, you could also be swept away by the doctrines that is going around. And in the Bible say, very close, it says that in the last days, in the last days that we are living in, many's love will wake all because of the truth. <laughs> And the scriptures say, when Jesus will return, will he still find faith on planet Earth? Because the spirit has been released to confuse the body of Christ. And if you're not anchored in the word of God, it can divert you for what you believe all the years. And that is why it's important to constantly every day to be in the word of God. And don't take it for granted that I serve God for X amount of years, then I'm still standing. Because one sweep of any negativity can sweep you of your faith in Christ Jesus. And that is the challenge we have in the end times now. That the Bible even says the very elect has been misled. So what does it say? The bishops, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, they, some of them has been swept away by the doctrines of what's happening and even changing the word of God to make it comfortable for them. And we at the church of Jesus Christ, at the church, we will not divert from the book. And we will keep and stay with the word of God. So in this time that you and I are living on, it's a personal relationship between you and God. Allow the spirit of God to continuously to mold you, break you, and make you stronger, that you won't be easily swept away by any form of doctrine. Okay, Pastor Gabriel is back. Thank you so much. Can you unmute yourself, please, sir? To First Timothy chapter four, verses one. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1. It says, now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, amen, and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience said with a hot iron, amen, forbidding to marry and commending to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Amen. So we know that um, Bishop has just said in a lot of times, that's the last day that we are in. And God is saying through his word, the sort of spirit that will be in operation in these last days. 
says, now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. That's exactly what that spirit is. The spirit of divination that Paul casted away is a deceiving spirit, amen? So we have to be vigilant and full of the spirit in order for us to know when the spirit, the deceptive spirit is at work, amen? And one of the ways that we can find out is when we're filled with the spirit and when we know the word of God, amen? When we know the word of God, we, can, we are able to discern with the word of God and by the leading of the spirit, hallelujah, and there's the, 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 the um, spiritual gift that could be at work could also be the signing of spirit. We're able to identify the wrong spirit, the deceiving spirit that is at work, amen? So Paul was able to speak to this spirit. After so many days that this spirit was working, Paul was able to say, hey, now is enough. Be quiet right now. And let us also remember when he was doing this, he didn't do it. He didn't speak to the woman. Amen. He did not speak to the woman. You know, I've seen so many people, they try to rebuke spirit in the flesh and you can tell that their emotions is part of it. They're trying to, you know, there's so much working in the flesh and they can't differentiate a spirit that is at work in somebody's life and the individual itself. So, you know, we have to be very careful when we're also dealing with something. We're not actually in conflict with the individual. It is the spirit behind that we are, we are, we are rebuking. Amen. Hallelujah. You will see the man that um, Jesus Christ met. In, um, let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 5. Now I think we're going into something different now. But hey, let me just talk. It just came to my spirit. So I'll just, I'll just talk about it. Amen. This is Mark chapter 5. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even the chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tomb, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And he said to him, come out of the man on clean spirit. You see, he addressed the spirit. Come out of the man on clean spirit. And he asked, what is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him honestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large head of sheep, head of sheep, was feeding there near the mountain. So all the demons begged him, saying, You see, he wasn't a man, well, it, might, it might have been speaking through the man, but that was it was not the man that was talking. Amen. So it might have been coming out of the man's mouth, but there was a spirit speaking through the man. And Jesus had to rebuild that spirit. Amen. And at and 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 so all the demons begged him, say, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter him. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Amen. 
Jesus Christ didn't say, hey, you guys, you demon, how do you operate? He didn't even ask them questions like some people would do today. <laughs> he didn't ask them questions. He just rebuked the spirit and the spirit left him and went into the head of um, um, pigs. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you see, Jesus Christ actually delivered the man from the spirit that was in operation in his life. I remember the um, the church we used to go to where my where I was born into. It was actually a cult. Um, I was born into a church called Celestia Church of Christ, um, and it in London, not London Parish. It's a white garment church. And I remember when we were in Nigeria, then my dad would always take us to church then. And all of a sudden, when a woman, the, the, the pastors or the leaders, when they notice that a lady is possessed with an evil spirit, so they take broom and they beat, they beat, they beat, they, <laughs> don't let me use the word. <laughs> they use the broom, they want to whip the demon out of a woman. And, you know, then we'll be looking at it and everybody will be looking at, it, oh, look, this woman, she's got, she's got, but that's not what, that's not what Jesus did here. So that's a false doctrine. You know, I thank God that God saved me and took me out of such, um, took me so out of such, um, you know, um, cult, you know. And I thank God that my dad gave to his life to Christ before he passed away, amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you see, Jesus had to deal with the evil spirit, just like Paul did. He dealt with the evil spirit that was in control of this damn cell and rebuked that spirit. But he was able to identify that spirit through the gift of discerning of spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God wants this gift at work in us, the Lord knows how he, he switches it on. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So supernatural manifestation in the realm in which we live originate from one or two sources, God or the devil. So many times, many things which seems miraculous to us actually do not come from God. There are some miraculous things. People who run after miracle now instead of actually running to Jesus. So everywhere they see miracle, they want to run down there. Hallelujah. I'm not saying there's no miracle. There's genuine miracles. But how would you know which is which? If you don't have the discerning of spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. How would you know which one is true and which one is not? How many of us remember the story in Egypt when, Joseph, when Moses went to Pharaoh? Amen. God told him, go tell Pharaoh, the I am says, free my people. And God said to him, if Moses do not listen to you, chuck your rod on the floor and it shall change to serpent, isn't it? And what did Moses do? He dropped his rod and he changed to serpent. Guess what Pharaoh did? Pharaoh said, oh, look at this. Come on, Moses. Is this all you've got? I'm going to get my magicians. He got his three magicians to come. He says, do the same miracle. They chucked their own rod too on the floor. Guess what? He changed to snake. Same miracle, different sources. <laughs> Amen. Same miracle, different sources. And the snake and the rod of Moses that turned to snake eventually swallowed the three serpents. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is superior. Amen. Our God is great. Amen. No evil power has, no, no evil, no evil can, can be equal to our God because our God is strong, mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He's great. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come inside. Who is the King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts is the king of glory, hallelujah. And that's the God that we serve, hallelujah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of 
Moses, hallelujah. He's the God, our righteousness, our shepherd, our sanctification, and our redemption. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the God that we serve. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, what, what was the time now? We've got to this few minutes. Now, I just want us to look at something as well. So we can correctly identify a genuine manifestation of the spirit of God if discerning of spirit is in operation. Amen. Through this gift, we can know the spirit behind the operation. Hallelujah. We have to know it's important. There is always a spirit behind operation. The Bible also talks about two kinds of wisdom. It talks about two kinds of wisdom. It says um, wisdom that is from above and wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. We have to identify what sort of wisdom, which sort of wisdom is operation here. And they, you know, some people, they think, oh, you know, they, 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 they give you some kind of wisdom that is so malicious, that is trying to cause division and that's trying to cause problem. And they say it's wisdom. But the Bible says the kind of wisdom that we are supposed to operate in is the wisdom that is from above and it's for peaceful, gentle. Amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we want to identify a spirit that is not operating, no matter how much operation, no matter more what miracle they have, if they are not walking in the kind of spirit, the, 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 the kind of wisdom that comes from the spirit of God, then we're able to identify that, hey, let's, let's go back here and, and let's just, you know, let's just be careful here, amen? And just either pray for the individual and um, just speak to the spirit in the name of Jesus. You know, we have authority. We have authority in the name of Jesus. You don't have to, you can be, you can be sat, stood, sat down on your seat and you know that the foul spirit is in operation and you can just do this. In the name of Jesus, get out. Just whisper like that. In the name of Jesus, get out. And guess what? That spirit will have to listen. <laughs> That's how powerful the name of Jesus is. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't want to disrupt anything, if you don't want to disrupt anyway, you just say, in the name of Jesus, I command you right now to go. And it goes. It responds. It listens to you. Because demons, they, they know the rules of authority. And when we use the name of Jesus as children of God, it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Hallelujah. You don't have to raise your voice to that. You know, some people, they will shout in the name of Jesus almost 100 times as if that name is not enough to just once when you call that name is enough. Jesus, you know, if you see, look at Paul. The Bible says, Paul rebuke that spirit at once and that spirit left at that time, that same name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So on the other hand, we can correctly identify the source of the manifestation even without having discerning of spirit. I said this earlier on. We don't have to operate in discerning of spirit to be able to know that a spirit is at work as well. Because, you know, it's not every time that we have the discerning of spirit working. And also, it's not everybody that operates in that, in that, um, in, in, in that gift. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so therefore, because we are filled with the spirit and we're filled with the knowledge of God, we're able to know when the spirit is in operation too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So on the other hand, we can correctly identify the source of the manifestation even without having the sign of spirit in operation in our lives. How is this possible? Because if we know the word of God, you see, if we know the word of God, like Brother Matthew pointed out now from first. John chapter 4 and verses 2. You've read the scripture. We've read it. We know it now. We're sitting down now. Somebody comes in and say, hey, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ was a very good man. But he's not, he's not the son of God, but he was just a good man. He did some very good thing. You know that that's a wrong spirit in operation. No matter how much 
they tried to say Jesus Christ is good. Like the man I met at the street when um, Peter was preaching, preaching, and um, I stood with him, and he was just telling me how much he loved Jesus, how Jesus was a good man, and this and that. And all of a sudden, in my spirit, I said, ask him, what has Jesus done for him? And he said to me, oh, Jesus is such, and it wasn't, an, it wasn't arrogantly I asked him. I was listening to him. He was talking to me. You know, we were having a conversation. And I just said to him, you know, wow. I, I was like, I was intrigued. I was saying, oh, I'm so intrigued with what you're saying. But in my spirit, I just felt I should ask him that question because it was bubbling inside of me. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Because we were having a conversation. I said, like, oh, so how is has Jesus been so good to you? He says, um, um, Jesus, yes, he's a very good man. He's, 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 he's somebody we can learn from. He's a very good person. But I just don't know how one person can shed his blood for the sin of the whole world. Boom, he went crashing down, all he said. Immediately, alarm bell in my spirit. This man doesn't know Jesus. Just tell him about Jesus. And I was able to preach to him that day about the love of God, of how he shed his blood on the cross, how he saved us from our sin. I gave us eternal life. He didn't come to Christ at that day, but I dropped a seed in his spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so because... He says, how is it possible? He says, because if we know the word of God and are walking in the spirit, we will have an inward witness. You see that? Inward witness. You would have a prompting. You would just not feel comfortable. You just know that there's something not right somewhere. Something is not right somewhere. And if you are feeling that way, if you know that the night... Almost 100%, you're very correct. And you need to either take action about it and don't let it, don't just let it, don't just leave it there. Hallelujah, because the Holy Spirit will witness to you inwardly. So an inward witness that will lead us and distinguish the true from the false. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So Romans 8, 14 tells us that for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that somebody can be right in front of you? Sometimes God gives us this gift so that we protect ourselves. He protects us from danger. Somebody can actually be in front of you and be as smiley at you and say all the correct words at you but you just don't feel comfortable in your spirit and you don't know why. Amen? And you just feel, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Why, why, why am I feeling like this? Why, why, why? So you just wait and you ask the Holy Spirit and you eventually see it. The Holy Spirit just shows it to you just right there and there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So these things are given to us also to protect us. Amen. Especially in the work of ministry, so that it can make the work of ministry easier for us. We don't end up putting the wrong people on our pulpits. We don't end up putting the, we don't end up um, um, having to do things with the wrong people. We're very, very careful. And also to also save our brothers and sisters from deception of the enemy as well. Amen. Because we are all responsible for each other in the faith. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so this verse implies that all the sons of God can be led by the spirit, by the scriptures 
clear and certainly don't, uh, but the scriptures certainly don't imply that all the children of God would have the gift of discerning of spirit. If we look at first Corinthians, let's open our Bible to first Corinthians. I will soon end up now. First Corinthians chapter 12. This is eight to 10. You can see it there, Sister Helen, please. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses eight to 10. A reading from the Amplified. To one is given through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak the message of wisdom, and to another, the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same spirit. Verse nine, to another, wonder working faith is given by the same Holy Spirit, and to another, the extraordinary gifts of healing by the one spirit. Verse 10, and to another, the working of miracles, and to another, prophecy, foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people, mm -hmm. and to another, discernment of spirits, the ability to distinguish sound, godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults, mm -hmm. to another, various kinds of unknown tongues, and to another, interpretation mm -hmm. of tongues. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you read that term one again? Um, the, you, there's somewhere it says, you say the signing of spirit, you, you gave some other... Um, that was 10. Yeah, verse 10. Yeah. And to another, the working of miracles, and to another, prophecy, foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people, and to another, discernment of spirits, Mm -hmm. The ability to distinguish sound, godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we see here, this is another, this is another, this is one of the, the gifts, what the gift as well does. is able to help us to discern, look at Brother Matthew, that first John chapter four comes in place. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That false John as well comes in place. Yes, we can, through the knowledge of God, know false doctrines, know what sort of spirit people are operating on or whether they are of the cult through the gift of discerning of spirit. That's what the Amplified has just said to us. Amen. So we're able to discern that. Hallelujah. But here, what I'm trying to explain here is that, um, where am I in here? I'm just trying to, do, 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 do. where is it gone? Discerning of spirit. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is that it's not, not um, um, uh, the scripture certainly doesn't imply that all the children of God would have the gift of discerning of spirit. It says, this doesn't state or even imply that everybody, that's that scripture you read, that everybody would have this gift. But it does imply that every believer can be led by the spirit, amen? So we need to distinguish the difference between the two. Some things are revealed to us by the inward witness and some things are revealed to us by discerning of spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Some things are revealed to us through the inner witness and some things are revealed to us through the discerning of spirit that would depend on the working of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I'm going to leave that now. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we just thank you. Bishop, can you pray for us, sir? Hallelujah. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, what an awesome teaching once again to the body of Christ. And in a time like this, Lord, we need to go deeper and put our anchors deeper into the word. We thank you for the vessel that you have used tonight. Using in such a way that even children, Sunday school kids would be able to understand. And this time, Father, because of the times we are living in, we pray that every believer will be grounded in the word of God. Mm. That every believer will follow the voice and walk into the calling, into the purpose that you have told them before they were even born. We know, Lord, in this time, many people wander off and taste other things 
And I pray God bring them back to the way you have started in the beginning. And if they faded along the way, that today, Lord, they must understand there are spirits that will mislead them in all of their ways. And even, Lord, will lose their faith, their confidence in the word of God. But I pray today, God, as a church of Jesus Christ, will live holy and pure and upright in the times such as this. And the time when you shall come, you will find great faith in us. Great faith of the word of God growing like a seed, growing to be strong and tall to represent you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Continue to anoint the man, cover him, bless him beyond measure. I pray that every brother and sister, Lord, as we go home and nourish this word into our lives. And if we watch it on you, Facebook, YouTube again, we will be empowered because that's what you want us to be. Strong, victorious against the arrows that come from north, south and east and west. Pray God that the church will rise up and be the light and be the example that the world will ask, how do we do it? All because of the word that is growing in us. Thus I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, my brethren and my sisters. Amen. Be safe. Stay strong. Thank you, man of God.